on a beautiful sunny summer's day like this, lots of us like to go to the seaside, have an ice cream and paddle our feet in the water. But what about the animals that live here all year round? They stake it out through the hottest summers and the stormy winters, and they manage to survive here. So that's why I'm going to be exploring rock pools. So I'm down Bracelet Bay, just outside of Swansea City, and as you can see, this bay is made up of carboniferous limestone, which means that it's been eroded by the motion of the waves to create these fantastic rock pools. And twice a day, these rock pools will be covered in water. And twice a day, they'll have big periods where they're completely exposed. And that's when the challenges really start. There are plenty of predators in these rock pools, and the longer that the tide is out, the less oxygen is in the water. Which means that these animals have become really, really adapted to live in this environment. So a lot of different animal and algae species, such as seaweeds, live in these habitats. There's actually a great diversity of habitats in itself. So there's the upper and mid and lower shore, but there's also surge gullies, overhangs, underneath boulders, the splash zone, all different kinds of habitats in this one small area. Which is why we're going to be exploring this habitat and hopefully finding some amazing life. So let's get to it. So when you come rock pooling, the first thing you notice is that everything is covered in something alive. Every rock is covered in limpets, periwinkles or barnacles such as these. Now these little things are fascinating because when they're young they're actually free swimming but as they become adults they become cemented to the rocks. They're really difficult to identify but if you look really closely at the plates there's a split and out of these come these little modified legs. So when they're covered in water, these modified legs called Siri will actually come out and grab any suspended food particles and take them back in to eat. So here is a limpet. It is a type of gastropod, just like the snails that you get in your garden. And just like them, it has a singular muscular foot. And he uses that to cling onto the rock during low tide. But when the tide comes back in, it actually got up to three meters away to graze. And he uses this really freaky thing called a radulla. Now a radulla is like a tongue or conveyor belt of teeth. And he uses it to scrape against the rock and to graze. Now I'm sure they're going to make a horror film out of that any time now. What's also really cool is that you can actually see these things called their home scars. Which is where they've grinded their shell into the rock to keep them nice and tight. So the shore can be split up into different zones from upper to middle to lower and you can generally tell what zone it is by the different seaweeds that are in the rock pools. So this is an upper shore rock pool and you can see that by the types of green seaweeds that are present. So for example, here is a bit of sea lettuce. Now it feels like slimy cling film and apparently it's edible although it's probably a bit salty for my taste buds. And the reason that it is green is because it contains chlorophyll. Just like the plants we have on land, uh, macroalgae, which is what seaweeds are, contain chlorophyll so that they can photosynthesize. Now, if you go to the middle shore, they tend to be a bit browner. And if you go to the lower shore, the seaweeds tend to be quite red. And that's because they tend to be more submerged, which means the wavelength of life that goes through water tends to be different, which means a different color to absorb different kinds of wavelengths. So there's also these really cool prawns, which are like sort of semi-translucent. And they have these massive antennae. So I'm going to try to see if I can pull one slightly towards the surface, so then we can, we can have a good look at them. Oh, there's one right there, if you can see him. He's just gone back into that crevice somewhere. In this little underhand. Underhand? Overhang? Oh, so there's one. Look at that little guy. Look at that, you can see his tiny, tiny little pincers right at the front. Oh, very, very quick. When they want to get away from predators, they curl up their tail very quickly and shoot backwards, which is a cool little way of escaping. So this isn't a live crab, it is an old shell of a crab. But the reason I'm showing it to you is so that you can see that there's nothing in this and this is just an empty shell. And the reason for that is because most crabs go through a process called ecdysis where they shed their old shells and then a new shell has to harden and in those days in between they're very very vulnerable to predation. Apart from herbivore crabs who have to forage for their own shells which is really cool I hope we see one. Whenever I see one I, I remember that that crazy hermit crab from Finding Nemo. Love that film. Right so I've just seen a crab underneath an overhang and now I'm going to try my best to get him. Oh, oh. There's actually two crabs. Okay. It, maybe they're mating. They look like they're mating. 
Look at them. Wow. I'm not going to try to grab them now. I think I'll leave them at it. Give them some privacy. But look at that. And they're just quietly going to slip back in underneath that over. So I think those crabs were shore crabs, which is quite a common species, but nonetheless, I was really cool to see them. So as I said earlier, most crabs do actually make their own shells. They shed them and then grow and harden a new one. But I have just found a hermit crab, which I was really excited to show you. Here he is. Now, I'm gonna try to get a good shot of the little guy in a shell, or hopefully coming out of the shell, so you can see it. So there, there he is. Such an amazing creature. Love it. There it goes. Oop. And there it is, back at the bottom of the rock pool and happy. So when you're rock pooling, it is exciting to find things like crabs, but it's also really exciting when you find a fish. So I have just seen some quite big fish flying around in a surge gully, but one of the most common ones that you will find is a sand goby. And I'm next to a very shallow pool right now. I can just about see one because they're quite camouflage things. So let me see if I can get a better look for you. They are very, very well camouflaged. They're almost translucent actually. Oh, there it is. So you have a bit of sea lettuce right there. And just there, you can see two dots. Oh, he just moved, or she just moved. Try to move this seaweed out the way. Oh, I love it. I love these little fish. There it is. Look how amazing the camouflage is. You can barely see it. The pattern on it is just so similar to the greens of sand. You can really only tell it's there when it moves or by those little dark eyes. I'm not sure if it's getting noise to me because it's flaring out those gills. Maybe that's like a slight defensive strategy of it. I'm not sure. There it is. Something that's really cool about these is the females will actually lay between one and 10,000 eggs underneath a shell and the male will then guard it. I, I think that's quite quite astonishing really. Now rock pools and sea life are absolutely amazing but they're not without their challenges. Obviously climate change poses a really big threat to the whole ecosystem but so does pollution. So next time you come rock pooling make sure you do something that I like to call a sustainable beach comb. So basically you come here but you leave not with shells but with a bag full of litter. That means you can have a great day out, but also do a little bit of good for the habitat. Now, this is the end of the video. There's so much more I could have shown you. I could have shown you more fish, I could have shown you anemones. That is why you've got to get down to your local rock pools yourself and explore the habitat. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed and learned something. Please like this video, share it, and like my channels. Now I'm going to leave you with a really pretty shot of Mumble's head. See ya.